Okay. Um, thanks. So um, my my name is is Adrian Reber. I um, work for Red Hat in in the kernel team. I'm I'm working on um, checkpoint restore and um, container migration. But um, I before joining Red Hat, I was running HPC systems for around six years. And when Red Hat joined OpenHPC in 2000, in late 2016, um, they asked me if I'm interested in it uh, or representing Red Hat in, in OpenHPC. And, and I said, yes, it sounds like what I did before. That sounds interesting. And that's how I, I ended up um, working with OpenHPC um, on OpenHPC and I'm my my presentation right now is I'm I'm out I'm mainly outside of the CentOS project I'm but um, OpenHPC makes heavy use of CentOS and that's that's why I'm here today to um, present what um, OpenHPC doing with CentOS and and why they are doing what they do. Um, if time permits, I, I, I would like to say something about the HPC SIG, but I don't I'm not sure if we actually have time for this. So um, let's start. So um, I want to start with um, what is OpenHPC, and the first look, if you look at it, it, it seems to be a software repository which is available, which you can use, um, which you can use with yum and zipper, which means it's for CentOS 7 and, and slash 12. Um, um, looking at the Use, usage statistic, it's interesting to see that um, the users are using, like 95% of them are using CentOS, so it's, it's very much focused on, on CentOS. And um, right now it's, the available packages are for x86-64 and ARM-64 architectures. And the usage of ARM is Low, it can be between, depending on the month, between 1% and 10%. So 10% is already more than I would have expected. But so it's a CentOS and x86 based project mainly um, right now. So the, the next thing I want to talk about is why does OpenHPC exist? Um, Many things which are in OpenHPC are already available in, in CentOS, or if you use Apple, it's all, also there. So um, at the beginning, it seems strange why, why it exists at all, but um, um, from, from my experience in, Open H, in, in HPC, it, it totally makes sense because the installation in the software installation in HPC systems, it's, it's different. And um, if you start at a, a low level of the software stack, you usually have, have multiple compilers. So you don't have just one compiler, you have multiple compilers. And it might be the same compiler in the same version, uh, in different versions or different compilers. People are using LLVM or proprietary compilers from Intel and ARM. And, and HPC users really like to use the specific compiler they want because it's optimizes the best, it's best suited for their problem. So you have multiple um, compilers, and you have also, on top of that, multiple MPIs. They are just um, different implementations from M um, MPIs, and also people tend to use what they know best, what works for them best. And, and if you look at the compiler situations, if you have three different compilers, in two versions already, you have already have six compilers installed, which you want to um, give your users access to. And then if you um, provide MPIs, also in multiple versions, in multiple um, implementations, combined with the six compilers, you just have 36 versions of MPIs, depending on the different compilers. So um, it's, it's different when you just install CentOS and when you run um, HPC software, and this is this is a common setup for for um, many HPC sites. So um, I've seen it. It's I've seen it everywhere, basically. I don't know how it's it's CERN, but what I've seen it's 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 very common. 
So um, going back to um, what is OpenHPC, um, again, is it's a, it's a community effort to reduce duplication of installing software because everybody, all HPC sites do it very similarly, but they all have their own scripts, which is, has, have grown over the years, but they basically all do the same things. So um, OpenHPC was, was founded with a vision. The vision is visionary like it used to be. Um, everything should be better and faster for the users and the uh, people supporting HPC system. The mission is, is a bit more concrete. Um, it should be a reference um, collection of open source HPC software, but not just the software, but also best practices so that things people do to run an HPC systems are, are documented and available at a single um, point so that people can easily look it up and don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time they set up a new HPC system if they're not um, experienced HPC users. So this is the um, list of current um, open HPC um, project members. The whole thing is a, um, a Linux Foundation project and right now it's a combination of hardware vendors, software vendors and universities and, and, and labs um, doing HPC and they all try to come together and use their experience in HPC to work with the open HPC project um, to make HPC easier to use. Um, for example, um, from what I heard at least, um, I think Lenovo and Dell, they actually use um, OpenHPC to sell HPC systems if the user wants it. So they don't, the users don't get support if they're okay with a supportless system, but it's a basic setup where they can get and then work with the community together. Um, as it's a Linux Foundation project, it has the, the usual Linux Foundation governing structure. There's a governing board, and there is a technical steering committee. Um, These this are the members of the steering committee, and so um, technical things are discussed here in a weekly or bi-weekly call, and we are trying to bring the project forward. And um, yes, I just wanted to mention that Carl Schulz from the U University of Texas, uh, Austin, he's, he's the, the project leader right now. Um, we are um, elected for one year, and the term starts, I think, in, in June. So we just have been all elected for one year, and next year um, there will be another election. Yeah, right. Um, so... Um, yeah, so there, there have been Legos on all my slides, and, and I even have some with me. So if you want to build a Lego figure, you can visit me later. It's just behind you. You can build it already. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, the reason behind the Legos is um, what OpenHPC wants to be. It wants to be building blocks. You can pick and choose what you want. You're not forced um, to take what a project tells you. It has different things, different approaches how you can build up an HPC system and they, and all those approaches are documented and you can pick and choose and build the thing you actually want. So you can build your own open HPC engineer later also if you want to. And a bit about uh, project history. Um, the first discussions about open HPC were at um, International Supercomputing in 2015. And the first release was in, um, at a supercomputing 2015 in, in November. And then since then, with every um, IC and SC, there have been a release. There are quarterly releases, so every second release um, comes with a SC or ISC conference. So, um, and it keeps continuing this. Right now, we're, uh, the latest release is 1.3.5, and 1.3.6 will be released with SC probably in November. Um, this is a um, 
graph of the compo number of components in, in OpenHPC, so it grows slowly. We get more and more packages into OpenHPC over the time. And this one is um, the changes between the versions, so which packages have been updated compared to the last version, so it changes also over time. And now again to um, a more detailed look at what OpenHPC is, mid, and I, I want to have a look more at the included software, which is part of OpenHPC. It's a software repository, like I already told, and all is based on, on LMOD. So um, LMOD is an implementation of um, environment modules, which is used to basically change your path and LD library path, so you can say, module load, some compiler, some version, and the paths are adapted. And now if you would run GCC, then it points to a different location. It's also a common tool in, in HPC systems to um, handle the multiple installations of, of same software packages. The reason why um, OpenHPC um, uses LMOD